Hi everybody, Bob with Knives Town here. Today we're going to take a look at a Spyderco knife. This is a design made in, um, uh, in partnership with Butch Valatin. This is the Valatin Subhilt Folder. What a nice knife this is, I must say. I, I, as soon as I saw this knife, I knew that I had to get one. Um, ships in a plastic sleeve with some literature. This describes the the knife. Uh, it does have some information about about the custom knife maker Butch Valatin. Uh, started be, uh, as a professional knife maker in 1984 uh, at the age of 30 um, and uh, he has uh, been making knives ever since then. Um, this is his design and uh, it's really, uh, really one of these knives that it, it's one of those knives that doesn't come along very often and when you see it you know you you really need to jump for it. Uh, this is, I would classify this as one of those type of knives. Let's get some close up on this. There's, there's some unusual features about this knife and I want to make sure that you you get to see them all. It's a good size knife, as you can see. It's it's a full size, full size knife, and it's got some. It's got the weight also behind it, uh, so it's going to give you a good cutting performance. There's the profile of it. Now, just to give you the technical specs, that blade is three and three quarter inches long. Uh, it is a hollow ground blade made out of CPM S30V steel. That's a powder steel. Uh, it's my favorite, personal favorite. Uh, I have uh, another knife, uh, Benchmade Ruckus 610, made of that steel. I've, I've found it to be an excellent steel. Uh, there, of course, is the traditional Spider Co. hole, thumb hole. That is a half inch uh, in diameter. And uh, as long as we're talking about the blade, there's, you're probably noticing that there's a, a little bit of an odd, uh, odd design going on at the tip here, and I want to talk about that. Uh, the hollow grind on this blade, it, as you can see, it's, it goes up to about this point, and then it stops. And then right there at the tip, on both sides of the knife, uh, that tip, it, it is a convex grind. Now that's, uh, there's a point I'd like to clarify on this. Uh, when we're saying that it's a convex grind, we're talking about the blade, the blade grind, not the, not the edge, okay? Uh, it is the edge that, that runs along the entire length of the blade is a secondary bevel, okay? So, so when we say that it has a convex ground tip, we're not saying that it has the rolled edge, like like a like a traditional when you say a convex edge and you're thinking about a blade with an entire convex edge uh, it's it's not like that it's it's convex in the sense that it's not been hollow ground but the edge though does have a secondary bevel just like a traditional edge it's not a convex edge uh, so j just to clarify that point there it, it won't require any special type of resharpening at the edge at this point here versus the rest of the blade down here. Now you can see that. It's a good thick stock that's four millimeters thick. Nice thick blade and, and look at how the strength of that tip is retained all the way out, all the way out to the very end. Nice and thick steel there. The, uh, the handle is made of polished G10. And, you know, some people have, have said that they think it looks like wood. Um, I, I don't know, I suppose. I, to me, it kind of looks a little bit more like carbon fiber. But uh, anyway, the, the width of the handle, I mean, again, everything about this knife is just robust and thick and sturdy. Uh, the the handle here, the the width of it across, 
uh, by my measurement is nine sixteenths of an inch and you can see look at the liners see they're extra thick liners and uh, the bolsters are you know good a good thick heavy duty bolster there and of course the blade like I showed you that's four millimeters that's a real decent thickness it does have a flat spot up here for, for clamp use if you're using that resharpening system okay notice how the uh, the the bolster is split here I, I think that's a great design feature and it's really nice on the cosmetic side it, it gives you that that sub hilt look and and of course the, the sub hilt is referring I guess is to this this piece right here which I don't know, in to me that's that's that falls a little bit short of, of what is traditionally known as a sub hilt but your fingers do separate by it so I guess I guess technically you could call it that but it's it's not much more than a than a finger groove really uh, but it is it, it is used in the sub hilt sense when when we've got this design feature and and here the the G10 is polished and it's inlaid right in there and I'm, and I'm telling you it's perfectly smooth across all those four seams it really really nice it's really uh, or three seams I should say it's you know I mean there's there's no um, everything is just mated together perfectly and it's really a, a high quality build you can see it does have a spacer back here that's a G10 spacer and that runs that's on the bottom also the clip is the uh, is a black and I'm glad they went with the black clip rather than putting a, a chrome or a shiny clip on here the black really makes it makes it a lot better uh, it's a nice tight one okay uh, and it is a four-way clip uh, so you can you can carry it tip up tip down left or right and the bolster has been drilled to receive that clip if you do if you do want to carry it tip down um, someone may wonder if the if these uh, clip taps go all the way through to the liner and yes they do yes they do the the taps go all the way through the G10 into the liner and speaking of liner uh, it is a liner lock knife and it's a it's really a nice I don't know if you can see how well you can see that but it's got a good good contact thickness with the bottom of the blade really does a nice job there's the profile of it it's it's the weight of the weight being 6.2 ounces really gives you a, a, a feeling of uh, quality in your hand it's a, a just a luxurious quality kind of a feel yeah when that when that liner lock snaps open it really uh, really you can hear it all right and it's and you can f open it also this way as well if you like I mean it's a flipper if you want to try it that way you know, just like that now one of the one of the um, interesting things about this knife which is unusual for Spyderco is that it uses a combination of thumb studs as well as uh, as well as thumb hole and and you know Spyderco of course brought the the thumb hole into existence but it's a it's interesting though because Butch Valatin is the one that invented the thumb stud so so in this particular model where we have uh, Butch Valentin in, in, in cooperation with Spyderco making a knife we see we get a knife with both thumb hole and thumb stud uh, so it's it's really a a nice piece and that thumb stud acts as a blade stop if you'll see here in the bolster you can see where that where that goes back into those into those cutaways so as I as that comes back there you see that they fit right into those cutaways in the bolster and that stops the blade from uh, rotating any further back so you're, you're locked up in the front with the with the liner lock and you're locked up in back with the blade stops it's a great system 
And I mean, the, the thumb hole, of course, as you know, if you're familiar with Spyderco, it works great to open a knife. But when you add those thumb studs on it right there, it, it to me, it just makes it even that much better. It, it's, it's just an improvement, an enhancement. It really makes it, makes it good. That's a nice looking knife. There is some jimping on the back of that, on the back of the uh, thumb hole there on that rise. It's not, I wouldn't say, super aggressive. It's pretty moderate. There's, you get a good shot of the G10 there. I mean, it, you can see what I say. It looks a lot like carbon fiber, and this is some of the most polished G10 I've seen. Uh, I, there's, we've seen other knives with polished G10, but I haven't seen it done quite to this level. I mean, this is this is highly polished. It's very well done. Yeah, this is this is one of those knives that you know I would encourage you to get. Um, you know, there, there's some great knives out there that have been made and then discontinued and they're not available anymore. And if you ever had your eye on a knife but you procrastinated and then it was discontinued and wasn't available anymore, don't make the same mistake with this knife. I'd pick one of these up while they're available. This has got a great feel to it. The action is smooth. The lockup is just just like a vault. Very strong. It's, it's got a, a great feel in the hand. You know, just a feel substantial. The width of it makes it uh, makes it feel good in the hand there. The 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 thickness of the handle, I mean. You know, it's gives you a good grip on it. You can put your thumb up there. The liner is a little unusual. It's not jimped. And I like that. I'm glad they didn't. I, I really don't I really don't think you need to have jimping on most liners. I mean you're gonna be you're pushing it to the side. You're pushing it to the side anyway, so jimping on the top is not really I, I like it that they didn't jimp it. Just left it smooth. It's got brass uh, brass washers at the pivot. If you uh, if you take a, a if you look down in there, you can see those. It's uh, just a just a very well made knife. Great great cutter, and it's spider co sharp. Really sharp. That's the Spyderco Valatin Subhilt Folder. Great knife. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again.